dear children, I welcome you all for the lesson today. Can you remember what we did during the last week? I explained you unit 1, units and dimensions. Now today you are going to learn second part of unit 1 about measurement. Under this you will learn competency level 1.4 competence level 1.4. What is it? We take measurements accurately by selecting appropriate instruments to minimize errors. How do you do this? You have to select proper apparatus to take measurements accurately to minimize the error. So, today I will teach you how to take measurements accurately. In our day to day life, you must have taken measurements. All these days when you were in the school laboratory, sometimes you must have taken length measurements, mass measurement, time measurements, temperature measurements by selecting different types of instruments. But dear children, when you want to take a measurement, you have to select the instrument properly. If you select the instrument properly only, you can minimize the error. Right? So, in the A level syllabus, there are some recommended instruments for you all. We will see what are the recommended instruments for you all to measure length measurement. We use the meter ruler, vernier caliper, the micrometer screw gauge, the spherometer, the traveling microscope in the laboratory. Right? When you want to take mass measurements, you can use the triple beam balance, four beam balance and the electronic balance in the laboratory. And at the same time, you can use the stopwatch to get the time measurement accurately. So, dear children, these are the recommended uh, instruments uh, in the laboratory for the A level syllabus. Okay, uh, we will see some pictures about these instruments, right? Do you notice this is the measuring tape? When you want to take measurements more than 1 meter, we use the measuring tape. And when you want to take measurements less than 1 meter, we use the meter ruler. Do, do you notice according to the measurement that you are going to take, you have to select the instrument. And here this is the vernier caliper, today you are going to learn about it. And this is micrometer screw gauge that is also you will learn one day. And this, these three instruments we use to get the length measurement in the laboratory. And here the triple beam balance, electronic balance. I have taken two uh, instruments here for you all to uh, see. And this is the stopwatch we use in the laboratory to get the time measurement. Now, I told you when you take a measurement according to the measurement that you are going to take, you have to select the instrument. Then only you can get the measurement accurately without having any error. What is the word? without having any error. Okay, right. So, what is the meaning of error? Error is not the mistake that we do when taking reading. Do you understand children? Error is not the mistake that we do when taking reading. It has scientific definition, right? When you uh, take measurements uh, in the laboratory, we introduce you three types of errors, three types of error. First one is called the absolute error. What is the meaning of absolute error? 
it is the maximum error that can occur during a measurement. What is it? The maximum error that can occur during a measurement. Actually, dear children, this is equal to the least count of the scale. What is it? Least count of the scale. Do you know the meaning of the least count? Without knowing that, you won't be able to understand the meaning of absolute error. Right? Let's see. I am going to draw a scale here. Right? See, I am going to graduate it by using line segments. Right? So, this can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This can be a scale. Right? So, the distance between two segments, the distance between two segments in the scale is called the least count of the instrument, is called least count of the instrument. So, when you take measurement, the maximum error that can happen in that measurement is the least count, is the least count. So, did you understand the meaning of absolute error? It is the maximum error that can happen when taking a measurement. And that is also equal to the least count of the instrument. What is the meaning of least count? It is the distance between two segments in the instrument. Okay, so this is one method of expressing error because it is not the mistake that you do. It has a scientific definition. So, you must learn with the definition, right? Okay, here, uh, we use meter ruler and the vernier caliper and the micrometer screw gauge to take length measurements in the laboratory. So, I, I am going to uh, show you the absolute error of these instruments. So, if you take the meter ruler, the least count of the meter ruler is 1 millimeter. So, that is the absolute error of the meter ruler. And if you say take vernier caliper, the least count of the vernier caliper is 0 0.1 millimeters. So, that is the absolute error for the uh, vernier caliper. And micrometer screw gauge, it is 0 0.01 millimeters. That is the absolute error for micrometer screw gauge. So, according to the instrument, absolute error has a different value. That is something you must keep that in your mind. Did you understand dear children? Right. Okay. So, next error uh, that you are going to learn is called the fractional error. Fractional error of the measurement, uh, we can define like this. If you consider about this, here from the fractional error, we check how large the error is in relation to the correct value. How large the error is in relation to the correct value. For that also, we have a special equation, fractional error is equals to absolute error divided by the measurement that you are taking or least count divided by the measurement that you are going to take. So, from this method also, you can express the error in a measurement, right? And sometimes we can express the error as a percentage. At that time, we consider the error as the percentage error. So, percentage error is also a mathematical equation we use to find the error of the uh, measurement we are taking. Okay, how do you define percentage error? That is absolute error divided by measurement into 100. So, from this equation, we can get the percentage error of the instrument that you are using. At this position, dear children, you have to keep that in your mind. Soon after you take a measurement, it is easy and it is very good 
if you can check the percentage error. If the percentage error is less than 1 percent or it is equal to 1 percent, only we can think that instrument is accurate to take the measurement. Did you understand? I, I will repeat it. For an instrument to be accurate, percentage error should be less than 1 percent all the time less than 1 percent all the time. So, you can double check after taking a reading, after taking a measurement. Did you understand? Right. So, we have three method ways of expressing error. Absolute error, that is the maximum error that can happen when taking a measurement. Next one is the fractional error. What does it mean? how large the error when comparing with the actual value and percentage error is the error as a percentage. So, that part is very, very important. If the percentage error is equal to 1 or less than 1, only we select that instrument as the suitable instrument to take the measurement. I hope you all understood. Dear children, we will check this, we will practice and see right? whether the instrument is suitable or not to take a certain measurement. I will take meter ruler. Have you all seen the meter ruler in the lab? Yes, it is 1 meter in length. And do you know children, meter ruler is graduated in millimeter divisions, millimeter division. Right? So, 1 centimeter means how much? 10 millimeters, 10 millimeters. The distance between two segments is called the least count of the instrument. Right? So, in a meter ruler, this length is equal to 1 millimeter, 1 millimeter. So, the least count of the meter ruler is what? 1 millimeters, the distance between two segments in the scale is the least count, right. Okay. So, we will try to take some measurements by using the meter ruler, right. Think that you are going to take a measurement that is 10 centimeters. You have taken a measurement by using the meter ruler, it is 10 centimeters. And now, we will see the percentage error, percentage error. What is the standard equation for percentage error? Yes, least count divided by reading into 100. Least count of the meter ruler is what? 1 millimeters. The reading that you are going to take is 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters means how much? 100 millimeters into 100. So, when you write uh, measurements, if you can write by using the same unit, then it is easy to simplify. So, from this dear children, you can see the percentage error is 1 percent. Percentage error is 1 percent, right? So, we will move to do another question. If the length measurement is 5 centimeters, find the percentage error. So, think that you have taken this measurement by using the meter ruler. So, percentage error is what? Least count divided by reading into 100. So, least count is what? 1 millimeters. Reading is what? 5 centimeters, that means 50 millimeters into 100. So, once you simplify, the value is equal to 2 percent, 2 percent, right? So, what can you see? By using the meter ruler, you have taken 10 centimeter length. Then the percentage error is 1 percent. By using the meter ruler, you have taken 5 centimeters. At that time, the percentage error is 2 percent. But from this, you can recognize this 
meter ruler is not suitable to take 5 centimeter distance. Why? The percentage error is more than 1, more than 1, right? So, to get the accurate measurement, now see the word accurate measurement without having any error, you have to select the instrument. So, meter ruler is not suitable to take the measurement 5 centimeters because the percentage error is 2 percent. We have to select the instrument where the percentage error should be equal to 1 or less than 1. Then only we can tell that the measurement what you have taken is accurate and it has less error. So, from this example, if you consider the length measurement more than 10 centimeters, the percentage error is even less than 1 percent. And if you uh, consider 5 centimeters or less than 5 meters or less than 10 centimeters, percentage error is more than 2 percent. So, this is a very, very important position about the meter ruler. Dear children, keep that in your mind. By using meter ruler, the least measurement that can be taken is 10 centimeters. Understand? You can't take measurements less than 10 centimeters by using the meter ruler. If you do so, the percentage error is more than 1. The accuracy of your measurement is less. I hope you understood. Right. So, then we have a problem now. What is the problem? What is the instrument we use to take length measurements less than 10 centimeters? Less than 10 centimeters. Yes. We have, we have a special instrument that is the vernier caliper, vernier caliper. Now, I have a vernier caliper in my hand. Children, look at this. This is the vernier caliper. Did you see the size of the instrument? Huh? Did you see the size of the instrument? Right, this is the vernier caliper we use in the laboratory. The measurements in the range 0 0.1 millimeters to 10 centimeter distance. Do you understand? Right, so then we can take the reading accurately without having any error. Without having any error. Most of the time, we have to think about the percentage error. It should be less than 1 percent or it should be equal to 1 percent. Right. Okay, dear children, uh, I will t show you later about the instrument. So, this is the vernier caliper. Right, the picture of a vernier caliper. It also has two linear scales and it used in scientific laboratories and in manufacturing for quality control measurements, right? So, uh, it is a very, very important apparatus and you are going to learn about it, okay? Let us see about the parts of the vernier caliper, okay? Uh, do you notice? This is the fixed jaw, fixed jaw and the main scale is calibrated on the uh, fixed jaw and this is the sliding jaw, the different blue color, right? It can slide on the main scale. That is why it is called sliding jaw and the vernier scale is graduated in the sliding jaw, sliding jaw, right? And uh, these two uh, jaws are called internal jaws and these two jaws are called external jaws and dear children, there is a pin or the depth rod connected to the sliding jaw. So, when you move the sliding jaw, the depth rod or the pin also moves with it, also moves with it. 
so thereby you can get depth measurements right okay later on i will explain one by one did you see the parts of the vernier caliper right it has two linear scales see this is the main scale and this is the vernier scale okay next important thing you should know the vernier principle vernier principle do you know it wait i will explain you vernier principle is something like this to graduate the scale we use vernier principle vernier principle is something like this we have to select n minus 1 number of divisions from the main scale and we divide it into n number of divisions to create the vernier scale what is it we take n minus 1 number of divisions from the main scale and we divide it into n number of divisions and create the vernier scale right okay that means n minus 1 number of division is equal to n number of vernier divisions that is the vernier principle that is the vernier principle right okay as an example if i tell you if you consider nine segments from the main scale it should, we can divide it into 10 divisions and create a vernier scale if you take 19 divisions from the main scale that can be divided to 20 divisions and create a vernier scale and if you select 49 divisions from the main scale that can be divided to how much now you know what it is 50 division this is how you create so from this vernier principle dear children you can create the vernier scale do you all understand right okay so here in this figure i am going to show you the standard main scale and the vernier scale you are supposed to learn in the a level syllabus you are supposed to learn in the a level syllabus we can have different types but this is the standard one standard scale you learn in the a level syllabus okay what can you see there can be nine divisions nine divisions from the main scale as divided into 10 divisions to create the vernier scale is it clear for you all right okay so uh, that means so on this side i have shown you the main scale up here you can see the vernier scale this is the below main scale up here the vernier scale right so dear children the distance between two segments in the main scale is 1 mm 1 mm right so you should know the distance between two segments in the vernier scale also how do we find yes how do we find we know 10 vernier divisions are equal to 9 mm 1 vernier division is equal to 9 divided by 10 mm so it is equal to 0.9 mm so this length is equal to 0.9 mm 0.9 mm right so main scale the distance between two segment is 1 mm the vernier scale the distance between two segment is 0.9 so by using this we can find the least count of the vernier scale what is the meaning of least count of a certain scale what is it it is the distance between two segments in the instrument it is the distance between two segments in the instrument so dear children this tiny little portion is the least count of the instrument okay so how do you find it see 1 mm 
this, this length is 1, this length is 0 0.9, the difference between those two we can get 1 millimeters, right, see 1 millimeters minus 0 0.9 millimeters, from that you can get the least count of the instrument. So, the least count of the instrument is 0 0.1 millimeters. So, once I simplify 0 0.1 millimeters, 1 minus 0 0.9 is 0 0.1 millimeters. So, if the main scale is in millimeter divisions, we can give a scale for vernier scale also. So, the least count of the instrument is 0 0.1 millimeters. Did you all understand children? This is how we find the least count for the vernier scale. And at the same time, by using these methods also, you can define a scale. According to that, the least count will be a different value. Understand? That will count will be a different value because it is a mathematical definition. It is a mathematical definition. Right. Okay. I hope you understood the method of finding least count of the instrument. So, there is another method we use to find the least count. That means, if you take the smallest division of the main scale and divide it by total number of divisions in the vernier scale. From this equation also, you can find the least count of the vernier caliper. So, it is easy to use this equation, right? So, I will not tell you to by heart. Just try to understand and practice things, do not by heart equations, the children. So, but anyway, if you want, you can use this equation and find the least count of the instrument, right? Uh, Okay, I showed you different parts of the vernier caliper. Depth rod, I ex showed you the internal jaws, external jaws. What is the function of each and every uh, part of this instrument? By using the pin or the depth rod, we can find a tiny depth we can find a depth of a tiny hole, right? You know the, the range is in 0 0.1 millimeters to 10 centimeters, no? That means this is a very tiny hole, okay? Right. And uh, by using internal jaws, you can take the inside diameter, inside diameter of a cylinder or of a test tube or something that you are getting uh, that is uh, easy to take measurements. Understand? Right. And this is how we use the external jaws to keep get the measurement. You have to keep it in between the external jaws and get. This can be a length measurement, it can be a diameter or uh, something that can be taken by using external jaws. Did you understand the method of using each and every part of the vernier caliper to get readings? I hope you understood. Okay, dear children, uh, we will see it. This is the vernier caliper, right? This is the vernier caliper in my hand. This is the internal jaws. And this is the external jaws. You keep the object between uh, the jaws, right? And here this is sharp. These two edges are sharp. So, uh, when you want to take the internal diameters, uh, you can rest the edge uh, on these uh, two jaws and take the measurement. And I told you the depth rod, it will move with the with the sliding jaw. Now, you can see it coming out. See, this is the depth rod or the pin. So, when you want to take a measurement, you can use it. See the way we have kept it. See, this is the way you keep and you take measurements. I hope you understood. Next, when you go to the laboratory, 
take these instruments right and handle it and take measurements and practice dear children okay right so the next thing is about the zero error these are the important things you should know that is why i am telling you right so soon after you take the instrument to your hand you have to find the least count of the instrument right after finding the least count of the instrument you have to check whether the instrument has a zero error zero error right how do you do it how do you do it right this is what you do you have to close the jaws of the vernier caliper see you are going to close the jaws of the vernier caliper jaws key close it like this right so close when you close like this two zeros of the two scale should coincide like this as shown in the figure right two zeros should coincide like this so if it is the case we consider that it has no zero error do you understand if this is the case we consider that the instrument has no zero error but there is a problem right when you use these instruments in the laboratory these are specially put there these are metal instruments so you handle with sweat hands sometimes in a hurry you will hold it and take readings with wet hands and because of the moisture in the atmosphere sometimes there can be water particles settle on this do you understand so because of that there is a tendency of having corrosion okay these instruments can get corroded and at the same time we have to close it all the time like this so when these two jaws rub on each other sometimes they get worn out understand so these metal instrument can be worn out and at the same time they can get corroded so because of these two reasons you know what will happen the there will be a zero error in the instrument there will be a zero error in the instrument you won't see exactly the same thing what i am showing here sometimes you will see a zero error we will see the types of zero errors look at this picture when the instrument is corroded right when the instrument is corroded you know what will happen there can be a, a corrosion settle on the jaws on the instrument right so there can be a thick layer between the jaws so because of that you know what will happen the zeroth mark is pushed little forward and it lies to the right side of the zeroth mark of the main scale so because of corrosion this is what we can see two zeros are not in contact with each other so when you have this type of problem dear children you can't get accurate reading you have to find the magnitude of this corrosion layer and it is a extra little no that extra little you have to remove understand you are not going to scrape then remove corrosion but by taking a reading and you can remove that is for the safety of the instrument i hope you all understood so then we will try to find the error error when it is corroded we have to find the error this is what we are going to do now did you notice right you have to find this little to find this little this little length gap this little thickness you have to find how do you do 
first of all you will have to find the vernier division which is coincide with the division in the main scale find the vernier division which is coincide with the division in the main with the main scale so here the third division is coinciding with the division in the main scale so that means you know this distance you can measure and you can measure this distance distance between this one is 1 mm distance between two segment is 0 0.9 do you understand so 3 0 0.9 into 3 distance is y z 1 into 3 is x z the difference of these two values will give the corrosion thickness corrosion thickness from this method you can find the thickness of the corrosion okay right when the instrument is corroded, the zeroth mark of the vernier scale lies to the right side of the main scale. So, zero error, how do you find? X is said is how much? How much? It is 3 into 1 millimeters. Y is said is how much? 0 0.9 into 3 because we had 3 segments. 0 0.9 into 1, 2, 3. Here, 1 millimeters, 1, 2, 3, right? So, the difference of these two is how much? Yes, this is 3 millimeters minus 2.7 millimeters. This is equal to 0 0.3 millimeters. So, this is the thickness of the corrosion. So, when you take a reading by using this vernier caliper, that little you have to scrape it up that little you have to remove that little you have to remove did you understand how to uh, eliminate this error okay dear children now we will see another type okay look at this one when the instrument is worn out what will happen the zeroth mark of the vernier scale pushed more towards the fixed jaw right it lies to the left side of the main scale zero right at this moment also you have to find this extra length this length this is the worn out thickness because of overusing because of overusing for that also you can get y z minus x z why did i select the this position because we have to find the vernier division coincided with the division in the main scale that is how you get the reading always select a vernier division which is coincide with the division in the main scale right from that you can get the difference so if i consider this length is how much 0.9 this length is 1 millimeters. So, how many 1 millimeters? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, total is 5 millimeters. If you consider this length, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, 0 0.9 into 6 millimeter. So, 5.4 millimeters. So, this little tiny portion is equal to 0 0.4 millimeters. So, because the instrument is worn out, that little you have to give back when you are taking the final reading. You have to add that little. You have to give it back because it has gone. You have to bring it back and give the final answer properly. That is how you get the final answer accurately. So, you have to do this, then only we can tell that the measurement is accurate, right? Okay. So, if I substitute the values, what do you get? 5.4 minus 5 millimeters is equal to 0 0.4 millimeters. When the instrument is worn out, the zeroth mark of the vernier scale lies to the left side of the main scale, 0 understand so these are the two types of errors you can see in the vernier caliper because it is worn out and when it is corroded 
So, dear children, soon after using this instrument in the laboratory, you have to wipe it and clean it and keep it inside the box. Don't just put it on the table and go. Understand? Understand? Because these are metal instruments. Soon after you use it, nicely wipe it and place where it was. Okay? If not, these kind of problems will arise. Understand? I hope your children will think about it also. So, we will see how to take a measurement by using the vernier caliper. Right? Okay. So, here I have shown you. I have kept a object between the sternal jaws, right? According to that, the scale position can be seen here, can be seen here. So, the reading can be given by using the main scale reading and the vernier scale reading. That is how you give the final reading. What do you do? First of all, you have to get the main scale reading. And you must add the vernier scale reading to it. And if there is an error, if it is corroded or worn out, that little also you will have to do here. That is how uh, we give the final answer. Okay, dear children, let us see this problem. Okay, so how do you get the main scale reading? Up to, up to 0 mark, you have to get up to vernier 0, you have to count the main scale reading. How many? How many? Now tell me, count with me. 10, 11, 12. 12 millimeters. Did you notice? Did you notice? Right. Okay. How do you get the, now shall I write here? 12 millimeters. Right. Now how do you get the vernier scale? How do we do? You have to find the uh, segment in the vernier scales coinciding with the division in the main scale. That is 3. That is 3. So, you have to observe it very carefully. Understand? Okay. So, 3 divisions with 0 0.1 millimeter. This is how you get the vernier scale reading. Understand? So, finally, you will get 12.3 millimeters. 12.3 millimeters. So, this is how we get a final answer when using the vernier scale. I hope you all understood. Okay, dear children, uh, even though I have shown you the vernier caliper uh, what we use in the laboratory, these are very beautiful and very uh, accurate instruments that have made precisely. Understand? So, this is the theodolite, right? Theodolite. Who uses this? Servius use the theodolite. It has a circular vernier scale. And here, this is a digital vernier caliper. You normally in scientific laboratories to calibrate the instruments. This is the instrument they take to get measurements accurately. It is a digital vernier caliper. And you know, dear children, we have another circular vernier scale in our school. One day you will see that is the spectrometer. In the spectrometer also, we have a nice circular vernier scale. Understand? You have to use it and you should be able to get readings accurately. Okay. So, they, even though we use that tiny instrument, these are the standard scales we use in our life today. Okay? Right. Shall we practice few questions? Are you all ready? Are you all ready? Can you do with me? Okay. We will start. First question. Shown below are some readings obtained using a vernier caliper having least count of 0 0.1 millimeters. Write down the value. You all start. You know now how to do. Yes. Right. So, what do we do? First of all, take the reading before the 0th mark. How many divisions? 7 means how much? 7 means 
yes 70 millimeters 71 72 73 74 5 6 7 8 before 0 there are 78 millimeters and after that to get the vernier scale you have to find the number of division in the vernier scale coincide with the division in the main scale that is 9. So, how do you get that reading? Yes, it is 9 into 0 0.1 millimeters. So, final answer is final answer is how much? Yes, it is 78.9 millimeters. 78.9 millimeters. Okay, let us do the second one. Yes, now see I have given only a portion of a scale. That is the way you get MCQ questions, right? You will be able to recognize the main scale and the vernier scale. Okay, so must practice a lot. So, this is the main scale before the zeroth mark. So, 40, 41, 42. This is 42 millimeters. What is the number of divisions coincided with the division in the main scale? It is 7. So, will you be able to write at, a, uh, at once? It is 42.7 millimeters. Do not waste your time. Once you learn the method, quickly do and you can save your time. Okay? These are very simple things that we uh, learn under vernier caliper. Okay, dear children, shall we do this? Yes? Yes, we will do it. What is the main scale reading? 61, 2, 62 millimeters. Number of divisions coinciding with the division in the main scale? 5, 6, 7, 8. Right? So, how do you write? Final answer is? Final answer 62.8 millimeters. 60. 1, 2. This is how you take. Okay. How about this? No main scale reading. But we can find the vernier scale reading. Second segment in the vernier scale coincide with the division in the main scale. So, straight away you can take that. How much is it? It is 0 0.2. 2 millimeters, 0 0.2 millimeters because the least count of the instrument is 0 0.1. Okay? Yes. Another one. The zero error of the vernier caliper shown. Okay. Straight away you can write. You can use the method that I have taught or you can use the shortcut also. What is it? Because no main scale reading straight away you can take this. Second division is coincided with the division. So, yes, uh, error is how much? Error is equal to 0 0.2 millimeters. The number of division is in the vernier scale coincide with the division in the main scale. Understand? Right. So, by using this, uh, you can get this measurement. A reading taken using the above vernier caliper is shown. Write the visible reading. Visible reading is the reading that you take straight away without considering the zero error. Understand? So, how much is it? Yes, 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is 56 millimeters. Number of divisions coincided with the division in the main scale is 4. So, visible reading is how much? 56.4 millimeters. What is the actual reading? When you consider about the actual reading, you have to think whether it is a worn out problem or a corroded problem. If it is a corroded problem, you have to remove that corrosion. If it is a worn out one, you will have to add that piece that has gone out. Understand? So, according to this picture, it is a corrosion. That means that little you have to remove. 
Therefore, you can write 56 point once you deduct this one 2 millimeters. Dear children, I hope you understood how to write the reading with the errors also. Right? Okay. Uh, Let us see an exam type question. Okay. Uh, in a more accurate instrument, 10 divisions of vernier scale coincide with 9 divisions of the main scale. Find the least count of the instrument. We did it. We did it. That is the example that I have taken. So, it is 0 0.1 millimeters. Just writing this is enough. If you want, you can uh, work out. No problem. But you know it. So, we did it just now. Because of that, I will write like this. Next one, the spear is removed and the jaws are brought together so that the gap closed completely. It is then found that the zero of the vernier scale does not coincide with the zero of the main scale shown in the diagram. Okay. So, what is the zero error of the instrument? You know, because this is happening because of the corrosion number of divisions coincide with the division is this 3 with the main scale. So, straight away you can write because there is no main scale reading. It is error is equal to 0 0.3 millimeters, 0 0.3 millimeters. If you want, you can get this value, this value and subtract and take, but no need because straight away uh, because there is no main scale reading, you can get the vernier scale reading and save your time. What is the corrected diameter of the sphere? Corrected diameter of the sphere, right? So, first of all, you have to find the diameter of the sphere. So, how much is it? This is 21. Number of divisions coincided with the division is this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this one or 6, yes, it is fifth division. So, that means the it is equal to 21.5 millimeters main scale reading, 21, this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, fifth division is coincided with the division in the main scale. So, 21.5. So, if you consider what is the corrected diameter of the sphere. So, it is 21.5 millimeters. This little extra you will have to remove. Understand? Because it is, it has come because of the corrosion. So, how much is it? It is 0 0.3 millimeters. So, your final answer is 21.5 2 millimeters. That is the corrected diameter of the sphere. Right. Okay. In some instrument, the zero error will be as shown in this diagram. What is the zero error of the instrument? Right. So, this kind of problem, we know that the instrument has worn out. Because it is worn out, it has happened. So, then you have to get this length, this length. To get this length, you have to get this length and subtract this length. So, if you consider this one, this length 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That means, if I write here error, it is 6 divisions, but how many gaps? 0 0.9 is the gap of the vernier scale and minus how many divisions in the main scale? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in 1 millimeter divisions. So, here it is 5.4 millimeters minus 5 millimeters. So, the answer is 0 0.4 millimeters. So, this is the zero error of the instrument. If this was the zero error, what is the corrected diameter of the sphere? So, this little because it is worn out now, you have to bring it back. It has gone now, you have to bring it back. So, if the final answer is, you have to give the final answer, uh, the 
reading that you have taken is 21.5 millimeters 21.5 millimeters reading is 21.5 millimeters and you have to add this little 0 0.4 millimeters so final answer is 21.9 millimeters so this is the corrected value for the diameter did you, did you understand okay so dear children uh, this is how we use the vernier caliper to get the measurement i hope you all understood right and you have to practice lot of questions and improve uh, your ability of taking readings and we will meet once again and have a nice day